What is going on everyone? I am Dane Peterson and I am here to give you some free and basic real estate research tips using your local property appraiser website. So right now we're standing right outside of my local property appraiser building. But the great thing is, is that nowadays you can access most, if not all of this information right from the internet. But first things first, what is the property appraiser and what is it that they do? To keep it simple, they're your local authority that assigns and determines values for your tangible property based on improvements and your property's characteristics. Those values are then used to calculate property taxes. As a landlord, rehabber, and realtor, I use these websites daily because of the amount of public information that you can get from them. And that's exactly what I plan to show you. So if you get any value from this video, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button down below. Now let's jump online and show you exactly how easy this information is to get. All right, so let's hop into the Broward County property appraiser site and let's get this going. We're doing things a little bit different on this video in terms of the fact that I'm gonna have myself showing here and there as we're going about doing this recording just so you can see I'm real, I'm live folks. I, I don't have other people doing this for me. And again, we're doing this for Broward County. Let's get going. So the reason we're sitting on the Broward County Wikipedia page is it's gonna give us a lot of good basic information, especially if we're not familiar with the area, it's a great place to go. Depending on the county, these pages can get very lengthy. Broward County is one of the larger counties in the state of Florida. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into the geography in the demographics section over here. If you check out the contents on the left-hand side, this is where I'm gonna get a bunch of that information. So I've just clicked on geography and what you can see here is it's gonna give us how big the county is. And it's gonna also give us some other information such as adjacent counties. And, and one reason that's gonna be very important. If for some reason, when you're searching on the property appraiser site for a county, and you just cannot find this property address, it's not popping up, and you're new to the area, you haven't really figured out the whole lay of the land, you might wanna pull up a map and just make sure that you don't happen to be dealing with a property that lays like one street over and it classifies it in a whole different county. So that's the only thing I wanted to mention with that. If you check out some of my other videos, you'll see I have covered Miami-Dade County. Up next, we do plan to get into Palm Beach County after we cover Broward County, so stay tuned for that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna identify a property and then we're gonna pull up the property appraiser website. We're gonna show you how to do that research. We've got Zillow pulled up and that's gonna be for us to help identify a property. We could uh, just type in Broward County, Florida. We're gonna click on that. What type of, I'm on a private browser right this second. so that everything acts the way as if it was your first time going to the site and it doesn't have anything saved in the browser, uh, nothing that I've ever clicked on. It just makes it a lot easier for you to see the way this should function as you go about <laughs> searching as well. So you can see right here in Zillow, it does something nice, which is it, it does do an outline around the entire county here. Uh, just below it, you have Miami-Dade. Uh, you can see it says Hialeah. Above that, you have Palm Beach. So we have covered again Miami. Next, we'll be moving north to Palm Beach County. For this example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up just zooming in and picking a random for sale property to use as our subject property for this research. But where are we gonna plug that address in? What is this all about? It's about our property appraiser website. So let's get to it. Let's pull that up. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna head over to Google and in Google, we wanna type in Broward County, and you're gonna see right here, as you start to type that in, it's gonna have property appraiser most likely as one of your top five results because when somebody's typing in the word county, there's a good chance that might be what they're going to. So we're gonna click on that. It's gonna bring up our Google results here, and one of the very first ones, as it should be, Broward County property appraiser, Marty Kyer. All right, so here we go. So we're on the Broward County website. This is my first time. This might be your first time, maybe it's not. And hey, that makes me think of one other thing. If you are familiar with these sites and you're watching me do this, maybe to get a refresher, maybe just to see how well I can go through this, 
please leave me a comment. Let me know if there's something you do that's a little bit different that maybe saves you some time. Maybe you see I skipped a step. Throw that in the comments. I'm gonna show you just the general purpose of using these property appraiser sites and the awesome information that you can get. So you can see right up at the very top, we got a couple links. The page is pretty tiny. Let's see, I'm actually at 100% and you can see they've got everything squeezed in on this page. Not a bad thing, but let's zoom in a little bit and let's get my face out of here so that I'm not covering anything good up. But over here, you can see at the very top, it says property search. We're gonna click on this. All right, here we go. So here's our property search. And I will say I have used this property appraiser site before because this looks familiar. It's pretty unique, but here it is. We are gonna type in our property information right here and we're just gonna be able to search for it. So let's go back over to Zillow. Let's identify a property. Uh, let's head down into plantation area. Woo, some expensive properties on the East coast of Florida. All right, look at this house right here. 900,000, four bed, three bath, for sale. Looks like a nice home. It looks like it was a recently remodeled home, uh, just judging from the pictures here. And if you're not familiar with what I do, um, I do fix and flip properties. That's my primary source of income. I also buy and hold properties and have some rental properties, but I can smell a rehab and I can see a rehab and that's a rehab right there. 62 days on Zillow, still for sale. 900,000 is pricey, but this is all we care about is this address right here. The 701 Azalea Court, less is more on property appraiser sites. Simply what that means is, don't try and plug the entire address in here. Start out small, work your way up, and a lot of times these will start to pre-fill in information. So let's do that. I'm not even gonna paste in what I already copied. I'm just gonna start typing this one in. And here you go. You can see this Azalea Court Plantation Property auto-filled. We're gonna hit that search, and here you go. It pulls up the property record for the property that we're talking about. So if we come over here, you can see this house looks a little bit different, obviously. Broward County does seem to put a photo on here. You know, where that photo comes from, I'm not 100% sure. They might have county workers that go around taking pictures when uh, they're handling something for a permit. But you can see this photograph is dated 2017. So we'll just take note of that in case we do happen to see something on this property labeled with 2017. It would let us know that that's the point at which the property appraiser went out and did an updated photo. Not all property appraiser sites have this photograph, uh, but it is nice. It's, it is nice to be able to go back and just reference, make sure you're dealing with that 100% correct property. We'll start uh, up at the top here under the property summary. We'll work our way down and then we'll work our way across um, at the top here. So you can see one thing I'll immediately tell you I like that they do is they have these tabs up top here so that you can actually go through and you can see the search results. You could do a new property search and you have your property result. I'm curious to see if we search for another, if it adds a whole nother tab uh, or it uses the same parcel results. But either way, I do like the tab feature, but starting at the top, it's gonna give us our property ID. This this is an ID that is used to reference your property uh, within the county records, uh, usually with the tax collector as well. Uh, property owners, PhD development. Uh, this is not a video to show you how to research companies, but if you go to sunbiz.org in Florida, that's how you're gonna be able to look up companies and see who those owners are. And you can see here, the mailing address is a different address than the actual property address. So for me, as a real estate investor, that's something that's really important to me. When I see a different mailing address, that means it's an absentee owner. It's somebody that does not live in the property. So that means there's a good chance that they're flipping the property, they're renting the property out, or maybe it's a vacation home, but there could be some motivation on them uh, wanting to sell that property. So for me, when I'm doing research, I'm always looking to see if there's a different mailing address than property address. So that's really important information to me. Also, the name. There's the physical address, the neighborhood, it's listed as plantation gardens, property use, this is a single family uh, residential property. You might see property, different property uses such as commercial, multifamily. Uh, those are just some examples that you might see under different property uses. Uh, and also there's usually different parts within these uh, property appraiser websites where you can go and you can actually get some forms that might show you what these codes are 
referencing. So when you see property use 0101, and then when you see this millage code 2212, which we can actually click onto that, usually those codes are referencing something and you don't need to know them, but there are spreadsheets that the county might have blame what those are a little bit further. Right below that, we have our millage code. If we click on millage code, it's gonna show you right here, based on the municipality that you're in, uh, what the rates, the tax millage rates were. And you can see it for prior years as well. That opened up a new window. We're gonna close that out. And we'll talk about uh, how to pull up the tax information here uh, as we get further along. You can see it's up there at the top. Right here, you have the adjusted building square footage. What that means is that's gonna be the total building's square footage. You can even see, this even explains it to us, air conditioned and non-air conditioned. Under that, you're gonna see the under air or the living square footage. So this is a nice size home at 2,600 square feet. The effective year is 1968 and the year built is 1967. Let me explain something. What's really nice is these are hyperlinks. You can click on this. So I'll even show you effective year. And in some instances, the effective year is adjusted when the property was significantly renovated or remodeled. That's exactly what I was going to tell you. What happens is when you see an effective year that's far away from the year built, it's because something was done to the property that got them to update the effective year. And you can see what that said, something you know major. But I have seen it as small as somebody placed a shed on their property lot, and then you can see the effective year was updated. But either way, we, we can see this home was built in 67, basically 68. Uh, down here, we have our units, beds, baths. So the unit is just referencing the actual building here. I don't see that often, but that's what that one would be. This is a three bedroom, three bath home. You can see it doesn't reference the garage right there either. This is the uh, legal abbreviation, also sometimes used on the contract. I will say this, typically you'll use this and you'll use the property ID on a contract just to, just so title knows they're dealing with the exact correct property. Appraiser information, so you got the contact number, you have the email address for the property appraiser. I'm not sure what the next is. Oh, that's neat. So it's showing us the 2014 photo of this house. So you can see this house has been through many, many colors throughout its life. Uh, right here, owner alert. Click here to subscribe so you can get owner notifications of changes. That's really neat. Um, I don't see that a lot on a lot of property appraiser sites, so that's something very unique right there. All right, so property assessment, important information so you can just tell what the market value of this home has been over the past couple of years, as these are gonna be figures that are used to determine the taxes that you're gonna be paying. Right below that, you have exemptions and taxing authority information. You can see here on this home, it does not look like they have any exemptions if they did you would see those um you should see the amount showing up here so maybe they have a homestead exemption and that could show fifty thousand dollars and then these adjustment numbers would be different but obviously it can't be homesteaded because we have a company that owns this with a different mailing address if it's a homestead property you're going to have the same mailing address as property address down here you can see we have sales information uh, that's provided to you so you can see what's happened on the transactions uh, you can actually pull up a lot of these deeds you know you can see broward county starts to show you these as far back as the 90s i don't know if they go as far back as the 80s but you can click on one of these so right here you can see the property was sold for 520 22,000 less than a year ago. So in October of 2022, this house sold for 500 in $22,000. It says disqualified sale. Uh, I'm not sure why that says disqualified, but if we click into this link over here on the right-hand side, it should bring up a copy of, that's right, the title. So usually you're gonna get to see a copy of the title, the deed, uh, and when it was recorded. So this, as you can see here, total consideration, the doc stamps that were paid. It's got the uh, county stamp on it. This is interesting. So US Bank National, so plaintiff, that's why this information is always so interesting. So if we go in, let's go into the deed right before this uh, last one here. So you can see this was sold for 161,000. So I'm guessing the bank took the property back and then titled it over to the new buyer, maybe through an auction or something like that for the sale, because that's a mighty nice price they got it for if they're now trying to sell this house, trying I say, 
for 900,000. Because if I look at this rehab, I'll tell you right now, they did not go to any extreme lengths to do what I would call a $900,000 rehab to this home. These are all standard builder grade materials. Those are some of the cheapest tiles you can get at Home Depot. Someone's going to make some nice money on this house if they get that price, but maybe they won't since it's been listed for two months. I think the quality should have been a little bit better. That's just my personal opinion, but that's not what we're here for. So you can see down below sale history for this parcel, recent sales in this subdivision. So that's pretty neat. You can see uh, we'll just say comparable properties and what they've sold for. So you can see here, uh, we've had two sales uh, this year in this neighborhood, uh, best being 705,000 for this 825 garden uh, court property, which we could see how close it is to our uh, other one and what the condition is. Uh, but this is great information. Typically, this is not uh, provided by a lot of these property appraiser sites. They might start to as they can aggregate more and more data and use artificial intelligence to get that. But you can see here, there's even a more sales link. We're not going to click into that. I think you can figure out what that will do. Uh, land calculation. So this is going to tell us how big our lot is, which is 16,500 square feet. 44,000 square feet is one acre. That's not too bad. It's a little over a quarter acre size lot. Special assessments. Talks about old plants plantation water, plantation stormwater, uh, school. So this is actually telling us what our schools are that we're zoned for. And it looks like it's even giving them a grade, which I think that's interesting, but that's another, neither here nor there. So we're gonna scroll back up to the top and I'm gonna show you what all these other little buttons do. And let's try and get through these kind of quick. I think you understand what map's gonna do. It's gonna pull up a map for our property. It's gonna put some property lines around it. But remember, you need a survey to know if those lines are 100% accurate. Never trust those lines. For instance, if you're looking at one of these and you see the house is like sitting on top of the line, don't just go and assume that it's encroaching the neighbor or it's going over the survey line. You need to get an actual survey. This is just a, uh, they call them GIS maps. You can even see it up here uh, in the title, GIS web. Every property appraiser for the most part uses GIS maps. But what I like about these maps is it's a great way to just go clicking around and looking at other properties and getting to know what's going on in a neighborhood. Maybe before you buy some house that you don't know anything about the area. But if I just go through here, I'm, I'm not an aerial view at all, but it, it looks like a nice neighborhood. Just every house, seem, like every other house seems to have a pool around here. You can just tell from some of these roof lines that some of these are some pretty nice homes. But you can see over here on the left, this layers list lets you do some neat things like you can uncheck this and it's not going to show you the boxes around all the properties. Uh, you can get subdivision names, which that's really neat. Uh, you can get land use codes, zoning codes, zip codes can show up. I mean, it's really neat what you can get out of the map here. You might want, you might not even have a property in mind. You might want to just start canvassing certain areas on a map to figure things out. But one thing, and I want to see if it does it, some of these straight from here, you could just click on another property and it'll immediately take you to that other parcel. So on here, if I double click, let's double click it. So double clicking is not doing anything. Right clicking is not doing anything. We do have Google Street View. So that's neat. It should do that for our property that's pulled up. Yep, here we go. You know, that's not it. So there's our house right there. We can use our mouse wheel to kind of scroll, zoom in and out. Uh, but what that did was that actually loaded up Google Maps. So that's really interesting because, let's see, if we click the X here, we're still on Google Maps. Let me try and back up. I'm gonna, I'm just using the back button on my mouse and that brought me back here, but I don't like that. Not everyone has that button on their mouse. So that was doing street view. Google Aerial, we know what that is. It's pretty much what we're already looking at. Pictometry. I wanted to see if there was something that would allow us full extent search by name. So we could do more searches. Reset map, full screen, layers, zoom in, area. Oh, this is really neat right here. Check this out. So over here on the left-hand side, let's get my face out of the way again. You can see here, right, aerials. It lets us go back to like, 
any year and see what the aerials look like on these properties. To me, that's really neat. I love that. It's also a cool way to see just how you know technology improves over the years as these images get like clearer and clearer. But this pool at this house has been uh, green for a mighty long time. I will say that. <laughs> Finally, it's blue. It's blue. All right, so over on uh, the right-hand side, you can see it's got that parcel information. It's got a lot of uh, the information that we just covered, actually. I want to see if the most important thing to me, if I was just kind of quickly looking through here, it's not giving me the bedroom bathroom count. Uh, it does give me the size. We know that's the size of the lot. Uh, last sales price, sale date, sale price. That's interesting. So, yeah, no sales. Let's click on this 2023. Oh, okay. I really like this. Uh, this map, I'm, I'm, I'm digging this. Check this out. Over here on the left, we clicked... This drop down, and we did 2,023 sales. It's showing us what each house around this house sold for. I'm sorry, but that is awesome. I love it. Talk about a really cool way to look at property sales. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys something. So when you're pulling comparable properties, there's a problem. There's one problem that exists with the multiple listing service, the MLS, which is the program that uh, realtors and uh, real estate agents are using when they're coming up with values for properties to list them, whether it's to list, or whether it's to buy for their client. They're looking at the data that's reported to the realtor association to their local MLS. If it's not done by a realtor, it's not provided you don't usually see those sold properties. So this is important for that one reason, that you can see without being a real estate agent, you can see all these sales. So what you could start doing is you could look these properties up, uh, let's say Zillow, uh, Redfin, Realtor.com, you could use any of those sites, plug in one of these addresses and see if you can actually see a sales record showing up because if you don't see that sales record there's a good chance that it was sold private party meaning it was off market it was me dealing with somebody direct and not having any kind of a real estate agent involved so that's why i think this is really neat that you can see all of this information and you can do this by different years so that's pretty huge i could drop this down to 2022 and you can see how it just shifted these over a little bit so that's why you just want to click around you want to mess around on this map there's a lot of great information here but we are going to close that out we're going to click on sketch sketch is going to pull up a sketch of the property so we already saw that our living square footage over here showed us at 2,625. You can see over here, it's giving us a little code for each of the type of rooms within this property. It's giving us what that area or that square footage is. It's giving us the adjusted area. It tells us what story and if it's under air area. So you can see right here, the one story in the Florida room are the two rooms that contribute to this under air square footage of 2625. If I look at this code here, I can match it up right here with this code. So this biggest square, that is the main living area of our house. This G and a half, that's our garage. This is our front porch. This FR, this is that Florida room that's now under air. Maybe once upon a time it wasn't. Uh, and, and I like how the sketch, it actually gives you what the length of each of these walls is. So you could actually go do that math and double check it yourself. But you can see it's even got the pool listed here along with the concrete pad that's around the pool. So that's what's under your sketch uh, estimator right here. New home buyers tax estimator. So this is a really neat feature. I have actually, I don't think I've seen this yet at any of the property appraiser sites that I've researched, but what you can do, it looks like, so if we put our purchase price of the 900,000 that they're asking for this house, and we check that maybe we have a homestead exemption, it immediately calculates that our taxable value is 850, school board taxable value 875, your estimated is approximately 17,150, which that can't be right, can it? That can't be right. Hmm, that didn't even calculate results right there. Let's see what happens when we do that, hit enter. Hmm. So it is adjusting these, but that seems like a really high estimated ad valorem, ad valorem uh, tax. So I don't know how accurate that is, but it is neat that they have that there. 
All right, so we're gonna click on portability. So it looks like we have another estimator tool here showing us the difference between the property appraiser's just value of the property and the save our homes value of that property. And even though these, they don't aesthetically look great, all these tools are very, very useful. Don't assume that because it looks basic, you're just getting basic info because this is the info we want. All right, so the exemption right here, this is gonna show us if there's any exemption, which we know there wasn't. We already had that down below. Trim notice, so here is an actual copy of the tax bill that would have been sent to the owner. So this is neat that it's, we're able to pull this up by just clicking on that one link right there. You can see it even says, do not pay. This is not a bill. So this is just letting the owner know this is what your taxes are most likely gonna be this year with with the proposed budget changes being accepted, it'd be at 38,880. And normally what a lot of counties do is you get a discount if the sooner you pay this tax notice, so you usually have a couple of months to pay it. And depending on when you pay, you can get a little bit of a discount. All right, next, this tax one, it looks like it's taking us to the tax collector's website. All right, so up here you can see Broward County, Florida records, taxes, and treasury. So it took us to the tax site, has a little pop-up with some notifications there, but it took us right into our real estate account number. And if you guys remember, right there, matches right up with the property ID. So if you had just come to the website here on your own and you wanted to search, you could search with just that account number right there. It's got a whole list going back as far as 2000 and one showing you what taxes were. It's just a good way for you to track over time what's happened with the taxes. So we're gonna come back, you can see here pictures. We've already shown you, they have that right there on that main one. So maybe this could be good if you wanna actually save this to your file or for a record. Uh, you could just do a little printout of those pictures right there. Uh, the fraud, uh, this is neat. So report fraud. Please call our fraud investigation unit. So that's interesting. Uh, haven't seen that before. I thought it was gonna be something completely different. I thought it was gonna be giving us data for police and accidents, criminal activity for neighborhoods. That's what I thought we were gonna get. Ask Marty. So it looks like they have a built-in customer service link right here, right from the page. That's really neat. You can rate their website. You can say what it is you do. It's got your folio number referenced and you can just ask a simple question right there. I'm not sure if that's what you would use to report somebody to. Say you got a neighbor that <laughs> is keeping their trash out at the street, not cleaning it up. Maybe you can ask Marty, I don't know. <laughs> and then print. I like it when they have, I mean, even if they don't have a print function, I always recommend you just do like a control P on your keyboard, bring up the print dialog and save a record as a PDF file, um, attach it to the records for the property you're working on, just so you have a copy of this. You can always get into these websites, but I'll tell you sometimes if I'm doing some late night work, these these sites, when they go down for maintenance, they do it at those type of hours of the night when the least amount of people are gonna be using them. So if you've gotten into the site, if you think you're gonna be going back to this property, this is a nice thing to do is just print this out and you can see with theirs, their, since they have a print button, it's gonna put this in a format that's nice and printer friendly and gives you a lot of that great information you need on a single page, maybe two. So I always like to do that. I always like to just save it you know, as a PDF, Adobe PDF, whatever option you have for a PDF take advantage of that. And that's the last link right there. Uh, and you can see this next parcel, that would take you to the next property ID parcel in here. So you can see here, still on the Azalea Court. And you can see, for instance, this one does not have a public picture, but you get the gist, it's the same thing. And if we do, let's, um, let's try it. One thing I wanted to try is I wanna try a new search and see if it brings up a different parcel result. I don't think it does. Garden court search, okay. So it doesn't open up a new tab, but either way, it's, it's very nice, it's useful. I like their site. It seems to be very user friendly as it should be when it's one of the larger counties in the state of Florida. Let's just browse around, see is there anything else here? Owner alert, so this is the same thing we had at the top here. Video gallery, market reports, download forms, record search. So you can see there's different types of searches. What we wanted to show you though was how to just pull up a standard property. So the last thing I wanna do here is right here, it says card permits. That had me interested. This adjusted building square footage, I wanna click on that 
And I just wanna see if this actually gives us permit information. So we got our parcel ID here, tells us single family, tells us foundation, which is a stem wall, stucco exterior, roof material, tile, interior, floors, plumbing, electric, ceiling height, construction, block, extra features, patio, permit. So it doesn't show us any permit numbers here. There may be permits for subject property which are not listed. Please contact the city's building department or click here to search. So plantation, so that's the one thing I wanna make a note of. When you're on these property appraiser sites for a county, a county will encompass a really large area. So Broward County covers a lot of neighborhoods, a lot of different areas, but when it comes down to the permitting, the permitting will typically be done for more of a city or a specific area. So don't think that you're gonna be able to just type in Broward County permitting and there's gonna be one single permit site. You might have a different permitting site for plantation. You might have a different permitting site. Let's see, we're just gonna zoom out here for Sunrise, Lauderdale Lakes. These areas might have all of their own permitting sites. So make sure if you're having trouble on a permit site, pulling up a property, it's not even finding the property to show you no permits, that you just make sure you're looking at the right permit site. So you can see plantation is greener right here. You can search existing permits and records right from this plantation site, but it's not gonna show you another areas. So just be cautious of that. The video is not to show you, uh, dive too much into the permitting, but if you're trying to search for permits, always at least start with the property appraiser site. As you can see here, since they gave us this link for card permits, we were able to just quickly get over here to the plantation site. And what we'll do is we will go back. So we're going to go back here into ours and we're going to see if we can find out if this property has done any type of permitting. So what we can do here, I'm going to just, I'm not even going to select the record type. I want to do a general broad search. And the easiest way I always like to start with is that parcel number. So we saw our parcel number 504102061140. We're going to hit search. Here we go. You can see it pulled up our property. So it got us our results without having to try and use the address. That's why I always like to start with this. Parcel number doesn't work. Then I would go as far as to start typing in the street number. For instance, here I would have just put in 701. I would have typed in the Azalea and I might have selected court, but I don't like to get too picky with some of that because like I said, less is more on a lot of these search sites. Start with the 701 and the Azalea and see what would happen. We have some results here. It's got the dates. It's got a record number. It tells us what the permit was for, whether it's closed, canceled, complied instead of completed. So it says complied. I like that. So the most recent one was in February of 2017 and it says unsecured pool, unsanitary pool. There's discolored sidewalk. Good chance that the neighbors were the people calling what I call code violations in, and that's why it says code enforcement for the record type. So really, when you see code enforcement, it's somebody from the county was driving around, they noticed your property, they took note of it not uh, being to code, and they reported them, them being the owners of the property, to the property appraiser site, and to code enforcement, and actually I shouldn't say they reported it to the property appraiser site, but they reported it to the permitting site, and it got listed here, and that won't get closed out until it's taken care of. So if we click into one of these records here, it should give us a little bit of information about it, it might not be yeah so record details yeah this is all they're really giving us which i get it on sanitary pool i guess you don't really need to put uh, more in there but here we go inspections so completed nine wow two partial compliance one violate wait partial compliance six violations found one check for compliance you can go into the details so you can see you can get down the rabbit hole and there's more and more information if you're interested in buying a property i suggest you look at all of that information why wouldn't you so let's go down to the first thing not code enforcement so in 2011 electrical permit install burglar alarm okay I didn't know you had to get a permit for something like that for a burglar alarm, but maybe you have to do that in Broward County. Probably not something I would pull a permit for. If I'm getting a burglar alarm, now everyone in the world knows. Um, all right, building permit in 04, re-roofed. So that's a big deal. 
I want to know if a house has a new roof and I want to see a permit for a new roof. You know, out of all the things you can get a permit for on a property, no reason not to get a permit for your roof, folks. It's going to help you with your insurance. It's going to help you sell the property rather than being able to tell them that you did it yourself and you didn't pull a permit. You can still do a roof yourself. Usually in most counties, you still have to go pull a permit, you know, do like an over the counter quick permit. Uh, but you can see here when we click into this one, it's going to tell us who the actual roofing company was that did it. You could maybe do some research, see if they're still in business. Maybe you want to use them again. Maybe you want to come back out and fix something. But uh, either way, you can get some information. You can see that uh, this one was done in 04. And we're talking about a property that's for sale in 2023 for 900000 I really, really, really hope that they replaced a 19-year-old roof when they're searching to make, I don't know, $300,000 profit on a property. I really, really hope. I shouldn't say $300,000. they are probably looking to make $200,000 when I look at those prices of what they paid, what they put into it, what it costs to sell it. Uh, but either way, I think it's going to help you sell a house a lot quicker if you replace a roof that's 19 years old. Where were we? We were over here. Yeah. Let's see this roof. Yeah. It's a tile roof and I get it. Tile roofs are supposed to have a longer life expectancy of like 25 plus years. But just in general, I probably would not be spending max retail value on a property that's got a 19 year old roof. I don't think any of you are looking to buy this house. But what I can tell you folks is that that's gonna wrap it up. That's our property appraiser research video for Broward County. I hope you got some good information. We covered how to just do your basic property research on the Broward County website. We covered how you pull up and look at what those tax Taxes are. We did a brief little quick dive into the permitting site and we showed you how to just generate yourself a nice quick property card. That's what I like to call the record of all the property information that a property appraiser site will show you. I hope you got some good information out of this. Go around, click, play around with this. And again, our next video, we're going to cover Palm Beach County as we hit a lot of the top counties here in Florida for our research. Again, I hope you got some good, awesome, free information out of this. I'm always open to talk. If you want to call, if you want to leave a comment, put it in there, hit that subscribe button and come back for more. Thanks for watching. Broward County Property Appraiser, let's go.